Spirit Inside. This is gonna be the first episode, but the second attempt at this uh, format. Um, tried this before and had to stop because I lost my place that I was recording at. But I figured on this channel I'd give it another try just because it's a bunch of random things. So it's uh, a little bit easier just to put out these kind of videos because of other stuff to put out in the meantime if I'm falling behind on this kind of stuff. But in this first episode, I'm going to talk about my uh, favorite brand and my favorite type of tequila. Probably going to mispronounce this a bunch of times, so forgive me, but it's a uh, Tres Henrisones. I think that's kind of close. There's not really much to say, so let's just get into it. Let's start with uh, the stats. This tequila plata is made in Jalisco, Mexico. It is 40% by volume, 80 proof, and 69 calories per ounce. Nice. And those are some basic stats about the tequila, not much really there. Um, let's just get into the history of it. Tres de Rosones is a brand that's a premium brand that's a sub-brand of the Salsa Tequila Company. That company itself has a super long history, so I'm never going to cover it in this video. And what I'm discovering as I'm trying to relaunch this series is that I'll probably do just dedicated history stuff on particular brands and then introduce something, another one of their products as part of that. But in this first video, I wanted to really focus on the tequila, especially this plata that they have here. So let's start with uh, Don the Nobio Salsa. He's the first generation, and obviously that's where the brand gets its name from. Now he founded uh, Salsa as a distillery. He named it La Preservancia in 1873. He's credited with determining that the blue agave was the best agave for tequila making. I mean, he was also the first one to export tequila outside of Mexico to the United States. The second generation brings us to Don Hilados in 1909. He's also the son of Cenobia and his main contributions include uh, expanding the variety of tequila products. He renovated the distillery process and he expanded the business. He did much of this during the Mexican Revolution. Then in 1943 we have the third generation of Don Francisco Javier Salsa. And as his father um, Don Hilado, he did much to expand the company, just grew the business. He also did much more to make just tequila drinking more popular in general. He's often referred to as the world's first tequila ambassador. He was also innovative on the agricultural part of the tequila process. He's wanting the, like, the raw materials to be of the highest quality to make sure that the end product was of high quality. And so it's with these three um, individuals in mind that we come to 1973 to com commemorate 100 years of salsa tequila. And for that, they commissioned this uh, small premium batch and from that premium batch, batch, we got the Tres Generaciones brand. It's still made to this day at the same distillery where Don Cenobio began in 1873. It's stated that a master distiller will look for the perfectly ripe agave. For blue agave, this is between six and eight years of age. Once the agave is chosen, they freshly press the juice out of it. Extracting the juice is an attempt to reduce the bitterness and deliver a more crisp flavor. From there, the agave is cooked and goes through a fermentation process. And I really couldn't find anything unique or special about this part of the process. The one other thing that makes um, this brand premium and unique though is that it goes through a third distilling process rather than the normal two for the other salsa products. Their belief there is that going through the third distilling process removes any final impurities and it, reside, and it gives them a more refined flavor without any of the burn. And as my favorite tequila, I can definitely uh, say that about the Plata, at least. So that's just a little bit of history. There's a ton more history I could go to in the Salsa company itself, or maybe even more just on this particular premium brand. I've kind of at the last minute decide that I'm going to redo how I approach the history part and make it a little bit shorter and simpler. So for now, we're just going to go into the review section. I'm going to start with uh, the bottle itself. From what I've seen since I've been drinking this, the second iteration. If I can, I'll see if I can find the first iteration. I like that bottle, it was perfectly fine. This one is grown on me and I like it just fine. It's got this nice wooden cork, so it gives it a little bit of class, as I guess you could say. It's got kind of almost a square um, dimension, so it makes it a little bit easier to stack in your shelves or wherever you keep your tequila or other liquor. One thing that I think that's a neat call out as you see that it has these three stripes on there, which I'm guessing represents the three generations that it's meant to represent. 
they do have them numbered. I don't know if that's legit, but if it is, that's pretty cool that they're numbering every batch. It's just simple and clean. You can actually see the tequila, obviously, and you can see what you're getting as far as if there's any stuff in it or how good of quality it is. Let's get into the other stuff. Just to kind of pull the curtain back. I'm filming these in one order and then releasing them in another. So I always plan that this would be the first one, but I've already filmed some other stuff. And what I can say is that some brands make it relatively easy to get into and some are a real pain to get into. So appreciate that that's relatively easy to come off, that plastic uh, cover there. See how this does. And now, that's easy. So that's a A plus for sure. Um, so let's go on to the aroma. I mean, if you're a connoisseur of tequila, Obviously, it's a matter of opinion, but you kind of have a range of what's bad and what's good and what's just kind of in the middle. This is fantastic. Um, no bitterness, nothing too harsh. This is this nice floral kind of fragrant smell. It almost sounds, smells like it already has a little bit of lime in it. It doesn't, but you know, tequila and lime go together, and this already has that kind of citrus lime smell into it. It smells so good. I mean, I've had pretty basic tequila and some pretty bad tequilas and then this on aroma alone this smells so much better than other ones especially the really you know cheap tequilas there's just something about it that makes me want to go oh right from the start before you drink it this though smells so nice unless you just don't like tequila at all then it's not gonna matter but this is great so the appearance itself well it's plato meaning it's the younger uh, it hasn't gone um anything from the flask with the barrels that they keep it stored in. And so it should be clear. And this is, I mean, you'd almost mistake this for water. If I could think outside of the bottle itself, you probably could. And I think the glass has a tiny little bit of a green hint to it. I mean, there's nothing, you know, that's going to freak you out. I mean, it's no materials or anything floaties in there. It looks so good as a plastic tequila should. Well, that comes my favorite part, the flavor. So I'm gonna get myself a little pour here. I'm not gonna get too crazy. All right, I'm gonna take a little sip. Oh, that's good. It's very crisp. It makes an excellent sipping tequila. Barely any burn. Goes down light and smooth. Like I said, it has a bit of citrus. Barely tastes a little bit of an alcohol aftertaste. That's quite what's kind of dangerous about this is that it goes down almost like water, it's so smooth. I think, oh, this isn't so bad, and so we're knocking them back. So it is strong. So we'll get to that part next, but yeah, it's anywhere from a light, limey flavor, flavor to no flavor at all, which is, could be good or bad depending on your restraint. I'm going to say that it just lingers a tad bit on your tongue, kind of bubbly, effervescent kind of thing. Then you get a little bit of warmth that hits the back of your throat, um, but it doesn't hang on too much. Like the mouthfeel is smooth and clear, really quick. You taste what it has to offer and then it's gone. Buzz factor, just going from experience, I know that, you know, taken responsibly, you can definitely get yourself a quick buzz out this. And if you shoot it, you're gonna, you know, depending on your body type and all that, it, it's gonna, this will get the job done. You don't have to go spend, buy a, like, pour out a lot of shots to do that. I mean, make a drink with one shot in it and don't overdo it with a bunch of sugary stuff. It'll get there and definitely straight. I don't want to get too sloppy, but I know if I were to just finish this whole thing off, I would get at least a little bit of a buzz. The flavor, I'm going to say it's a four, maybe four and a half. Um, the only reason I'll give it a perfect there is because it does have a little bit of a burn and there's a little bit of an alcohol taste. It's quick, and so I'll give that a four or four and a half shots. The mouthfeel kind of tied into the flavor as far as 
feel it in your mouth. Some of them, maybe less of uh, pleasing parts, but then it's gone really quick, so I'll say that's a four. Now, the buzz factor, I mean, really depends on how fast and how strong you want it, but I think it's the perfect level, so I'll give it a five shot, just because you can get there responsibly and relatively quickly without it overtaking you, and it's, uh, I'll say overall, it's probably got to average out to at least a four. You could enjoy it just as is, obviously. It's Perfectly good for sipping and drinking it straight, but it also works great in a mix. It's kind of ridiculous to have something of such high quality put in a mix. Usually, you get something cheaper, but this isn't terribly expensive. I do think if you start with higher qualities of liquor for your mixes, it ends up being, in my mind, maybe it's a placebo effect that you end up a better drink, mixed drink, better cocktail if you started with cheaper stuff. So let's get into the mix. This cocktail I'm going to show you is something I like to put together on hot days. I'm sure it's been invented long before I ever put it together and has a proper name. I usually associate this drink with the afternoons. And since there's already a drink called the Tequila Sunrise, I guess we can call this the Tequila Afternoon. So our first ingredient is obviously the Plata Tequila. Our next ingredient is Squirt Soda, which is a grapefruit based soda. Next, I like to add some lime juice just to enhance the citrus flavor. You can use fresh squeezed lime if you prefer. I just go with uh, the container juice. Another optional ingredient is some type of bitter. And of course, you gotta have ice to chill it. I think cube ice makes the most sense in this case, but you use whatever you prefer. And if you would like to sweeten it a little bit, you could add a simple syrup, or I like to add sugar cubes if I have it available. One of the best parts about this cocktail is that there really isn't any equipment needed. You can either go with a tall glass or a short glass, whatever you prefer. I should go with a tall glass just so I can top things out if I want to. The only other really piece of equipment you'll need is a stirrer. Normally I don't really measure anything out, I just kind of eyeball it. But I am going to use this jigger just to give you some guidance. Let's start by filling our glass with ice. My standard is to go with three ice cubes for this drink. Next, we'll add in 1.5 ounces of the Plata Tequila. Next, let's add in 3.5 ounces of the Squirt Soda. Next, I'm going to add 2 ounces of lime juice. And you can stop there if you would like and just give it a quick stir, but feel free to experiment and adjust the ratio of the ingredients to your taste. You can also add some bitters if you prefer. I usually just add the bitters because I have a lot of them from other drinks that I make. I have to admit that no matter what type of bitter I use, I don't really notice it in the flavor, but it does change the mouthfeel a little bit. It gives it an airy and lighter feel, which is nice on a hot day. And there you go. That's how we make that drink. Like I said, it's not something original, something I'm sure that's been invented by someone else and has a proper name. Kind of came across it also on my own, so I don't have a particular name for it. It's just how I like to drink this Plata tequila. So let's go ahead and review how it came out. Now, like I said, most of the time I just eyeball this drink and pour to taste. But I try to come up with some kind of measurements there that will hopefully guide you. Normally, I, I drink in a tall glass like this and it's probably a little bit higher than that. I probably put a little bit more um, uh, the squirt. But I figured that's just a good starting point and you can just adjust to your taste if you want. Less squirt, more squirt, or more tequila, less tequila, or more uh, the lime juice. Pretty simple. So let's start with um, the aroma. And I think it's as good as it was before it's improved because you still have that citrusy smell in it. But now it's kind of enhanced by the grapefruit soda, which is the squirt is. Got almost a kind of a citrusy, but like it's a little bit more mellow. Um, the appearance looks fine. It's uh, obviously more of a summer or hot weather drink. This is good. I mean, there's a reason why I make this all the time with this tequila. It's refreshing. I know from experience that this is 
good as far as simple and quick and tasty and gets the job done. The mouthfeel, I think this has improved also just because whatever little bit of negative things you could say about having it a straight, just sipping it straight, is gone. Now that any type of hint of bitterness or burn is just totally taken over by the grape soda. The squirt does a really good job of kind of masking that and giving you just the citrus and that light uh, flavor. The best factor on this, you know, it depends on how you mix it. Like I said, I eyeball it and uh, I always get a quick, easy buzz out of it. I'm probably doing a little bit more tequila than what I showed you in the mix section, but not by much. And, but then I'm also putting quite a bit of more of the squirt to top it off. Like I said, it's usually up to about here. In any case, that's pretty much it. My favorite tequila, my favorite mix to do with it. So until the next time, enjoy the spirits of sin.